Hi there everyone and welcome back to another a mega exciting chess game by Mikhail Tal once again. So in this chess game Tal had the black pieces this time and his opponent was Vladimirov, a Russian chess grandmaster Evgeny Vladimirov. Uh, so uh, this I couldn't find the picture of Vladimirov. Actually he has a picture but that's a recent picture. So uh, this game was played in 1988. So it would not be appropriate uh, to use that picture. So I'm going to show you this cute and uh, a pretty rare picture of Mikhail Tal, which I haven't seen this picture before. So in this picture, Tal, as you can see, is on the right. And on the left, I believe that's Rafael Waganian. And Vladimirov is the gentleman in the middle telling something to them. Uh, so it's a very nice picture from the good old times. A very nice picture of Mikhail Tal. So uh, let's check out what happened in this chess game. This is a bone crushing, attacking, aggressive, crushing, uh, dashing, attacking chess game, as we all expect from Tal. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, so Tal had the black pieces. I'm going to check out uh, this chess game from Tal's perspective. And uh, is this King's Indian defense? No, not G6, but C5 by Tal. And this is the Benoni defense. So we have d5 and then g6. So Tal is playing the Benoni defense. Knight to c3, bishop to g7, e4, and Mikhail Tal castled. Uh, developing the knight uh, in this position, if pushing the pawn, if e5, then knight can go back. And actually, black has a pretty decent position. Retreating uh, the piece, it looks like black is a little bit more passive, but this is a logical position for black. So in this position, after castling, knight to f3 and then d6, normal moves and pushing the pawns and Mikhail Tal wants to free his pieces. So e takes on d5, e takes on d5 and then Tal is checking the king. And Vladimirov is blocking with the bishop and then knight to h5. In this position, knight to g3 is possible because if capturing the knight, I mean that is attacking the rook. Rook takes bishop, I believe, if I'm not mistaken and if not capturing the knight defending the rook uh, losing the casting rights in the king side so castling because of that and then developing the knight and knight in exchanging and in this position actually vladimirov played a dubious move he played bishop to h6 instead of this move he should have considered rook from f to e1 but this is actually a standard idea in positions like this uh, but uh, so Black uh, white wants to exchange uh, the bishops and Tal goes for it. Queen takes on h6 and it is black to move. It is Mikhail Tal's turn in this position. It is black to move. And Mikhail Tal played. Bishop takes on h3. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sacrificing the bishop just like that. And actually, this is a pretty logical sacrifice. A hammer blow by Mikhail Tal. And Vladimirov captured the bishop and then queen gets in. And actually, this, uh, this appears to be a very dangerous attack. And actually, in this position, after bishop takes on h3, uh, if not capturing the bishop, basically black, uh, black is a pawn up and capturing the bishop and queen to h4 and actually in this position rook to g5 is a very dangerous threat so we have king to h2 and let's take it back let's play a random move then we have a rook to g5 a, and after let's say king to h2 then we have check check and then getting checkmated and if king to h1 it is needless to say basically white is getting checkmated in one move so bishop takes and queen to h4 and rook to g5 is coming. So defending with the king and then still rook to g5 and threatening queen to f4, queen to f3 and then queen to g2 checkmate. So we have knight to e2 defending on f4. So if a5 some random move then check, check and checkmate. There is no defense. So after rook to g5, we have knight to e2, but Mikhail Tal played a very obvious move. Rook to e8 and attacking the defender of f4. And if pushing the pawn, rook takes knight check, bishop takes queen to g3, queen to g2, checkmate. So defending with the rook, but here comes another 
Hammer Blow by Tull, U Rook Takes, On E2, Oh Yeah, Amazing isn't it? <laughs> we have Bishop Takes on E2, but here comes Check, and after moving the King, uh, which is the only move actually in this position, Tull played Queen to E4, provoking F3, because if King to H2, Queen to G2, Checkmate. So F3 provoking this move and then Queen to H4. Well, e, e, we have Queen takes on G5. And actually in this position, after Queen to F4 and after King to H1, if Tal wanted, he could have a win the Queen with playing Rook to G1. And that's going to be a discover attack to the Queen. But he wants all of it. He played Queen to E4. And then provoking this move. And now how to defend? Queen takes on h3. So basically this is forced, giving up the queen and it is all over. Another victim of Tal. Poor Vladimirov. Well, a rook to f2 doesn't make any sense. Check and we can capture the bishop next. So this is what happened. Giving up the queen. A knight is coming. So uh, the rest is pretty easy for Tal. Defending the bishop. Uh, chopping one more pawn off. Pawn up and then queen back, a threatening checkmate, so bishop back, king to e2, checking the king, very precise actually. And in this position Vladimirov resigned because preventing the checkmate is not easy. I'm going to show you a few possible lines. For example, if rook to e2, let's say a random move, then getting checkmated. If king to e3, getting mated like this. And if uh, this move, then check and check. So if this move, then we have check and getting checkmated. And if king to e4, getting checkmated. Okay, so after queen takes on b2, uh, white resigned. Unbelievable attack by Mikhail Tal. And Vladimirov uh, underestimated that bishop sacrifice, actually. Uh, where was that position? So in this position, bishop takes on h3. He underestimated this move. So... Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time. So stay safe, take care and bye bye.